Here I'm looking at just the percent of victims uh, under age eight, the percent that were male. Now remember, it's a lower proportion that were male, but here you can still see it's a 0.77 correlation with uh, homosexual men in the priesthood. That's still a very strong correlation. It's weaker, it's reduced, uh, but it's still quite strong. It's affected a little bit, but not much, by the presence of a subculture. Now what's interesting about this, looking at this age group, uh, is that it goes to the question of opportunity. Um, because the John Jay College claimed uh, that um, uh, much of the abuse was due to the fact that there were more boys available to abuse. And I've read this in many, many kind of uh, ad hoc accounts, people thinking about these things. Well, there were lots of uh, altar boys during that time. Girls were not allowed to be altar servers, so they just had boys to abuse. That's why they did it. Uh, and this uh, points out that there is some truth to that. Uh, that was an effect. Uh, because uh, when you're, you're just looking at all the victims, it's a 0.98 correlation. When you're just looking at the percent of victims uh, who are male under the age of eight, it's down to 0.77. Boys under the age of eight were not old enough to be altar servers at any time in the Catholic Church. So access to boys as opposed to girls for victims for, for children this young was probably not a big factor. It was a factor here. Uh, and so the difference between these two, I just roughly estimate that about one-fifth, you, su you subtract these two, you get 0.21, which is about one-fifth uh, of the whole range of abuse, may be attributable to uh, enhanced um, availability of boys or to uh, opportunity. Uh, but it, it doesn't uh, negate the fact uh, or make the fact go away that a much higher proportion of the abuse seems to be related to the presence of homosexual men. Opportunity and orientation are not mutually exclusive um, factors uh, in promoting the abuse. They both might be true.